Hello everyone, it's Jennifer, and thank you so much for joining me today. Today we are going to be designing using the Ugly Sweater Design Challenge Kit from Softflex Company. And I just uh, published, posted, uh, released a uh, an unboxing so that you can see the kit in its entirety. I am going to be making a necklace. I need a necklace and I'd already recorded or started recording uh, me assembling the bracelet using the garnet. I'm using the garnet color medium uh, beading wire that was included in the kit and I was putting it together and it just didn't feel right and sometimes that just happens right and so now what I want to do is go ahead and uh, I brought in these bicones, these opaque bicones, which I didn't have in my original design. And I had some other red crystals from the Christmas sweater. This is the Christmas sweater bead mix. Now, by the time that this is posted, this kit might be sold out. Also, sometimes what they'll do is they will have extra bead mixes and you could buy the bead mix separately. If they have that available, I would strongly suggest doing that. I already bought an extra one. And so I had some of the uh, translucent uh, red in here, but it kind of took away from the red uh, coin beads that I want to have kind of stand out. So I'm using very, very little of my kit. I'm using some of the beads. All of the beads here are from the bead mix with the exception of these pinch beads. And the pinch beads are from the little extra mix that you got that had the little Santa and the little Christmas ornaments. And then um, again, like I said, I'm gonna be using some of those bicones. If you want extra length, you can just add more bicones. And I think there's still a few more of these gold uh, pinch beads in this mix. And I'm looking and there are at least two. So if you wanted to add some extra length, you can do that as well. I want about an 18 inch necklace. And oh, and then I didn't touch these two strands yet. But I do want about an eight, 18 inch necklace. And here's the thing. If... I don't have 18 inches of beads. I'm okay with that because I love exposing the wire. Plus, also too, I don't wear my hair up. And so I kind of waste my beads per se because I get really stingy with my beads. But I kind of waste my beads by having them go around my neck since I never really wear my hair up, at least out. So again, if you want to extend the length, there are still... still um, you can still get another like three, three, you could still get three on both sides or six on both sides, six on both sides plus um, one extra one that you can use for something. And let me see how many are in here still. And again, my mix might be a little different, but oh yeah, there's plenty. So even if I get to the end here and I decide that I want to go ahead and extend it out, I can still do that. I am keeping this on the spool just so that I can uh, minimize waste. You're never going to eliminate it, but you can minimize it. And this happens to be exactly the length I want. So if we get to the end, this is how much I want. I will um, be happy with that. All right, so now, now it's just gonna be simple stringing. So as I am simple stringing this, as I'm attempting to simple string this, just tell you a little bit about this kit. So if you haven't seen the unboxing where I talk about this design challenge kit, this is a design challenge kit from Softflex Company. And Softflex Company is a small family owned business out of Sonoma, which is here in California. And they specialize in beading wire. However, though, they have tons of other things too. They have incredible, I love their craft wire. I have some here sitting at my desk and they also have incredible crimp tubes. I love their crimp tubes and gemstones and chuck glass 
and seed beads. They just have it all. One stop shop. And I love their collab their monthly collaboration with Jesse James Beads for these kits because they're just incredible. Incredible beads. Uh, this kit is $34.99. And as I said, it might be sold out by the time I get this posted. The reason why I'm not posting this right away is because Softlex Company, they have their main reveal. So their reveal that they do and their design along or create along, um, they will do that on the, they'll air that live on their YouTube channel the last Wednesday of each month at 3 p.m. Pacific time. And they have some incredible designers on that show. I have been able to be a designer on that show and absolutely loved it. Had so much fun. I was with Sarah and whether you were Sarah or Kristen, it's always fun. All right. So there's half, there's half of it there. And again, I can add, this is about an inch. So I can add two more sections for two more inches, actually four more inches on both sides. So uh, getting back. Oh, and also too, throughout the month, they have, they, Softlex Company has different live shows and designing, uh, let's see, design on the fly. I know there's Free Spirit with Kristen and Spill the Beads with Joyce and Sarah gets in there too. And you just, you can't go wrong with any of their lives. So please subscribe to their YouTube channel if you aren't already so that you don't miss out. They also have live sales that they do and you can snag some, sometimes you can snag some, um, some discontinued items, which is kind of fun. All right. So we're getting towards the end here and I'm just going to keep on talking and what I what I absolutely also love about the beading wire, and I mentioned I like to expose the wire, you can do so much with this. We've, over the years, and I say over the years, it's only been since 2020 that I've been in jewelry making, and there's been so many different ways to use this beading wire. I like exposing it, and so a lot of times when there's big chunky beads, I will make it a double strand and uh, yeah, it's just so cool. So pretty, beautiful. All right, so now we're down to the end and I have quite a bit that I still have here and that's okay because I want to expose some of that. Now, what you can do is you can, we'll go ahead and cinch it off. We'll go ahead and cinch it off. So I am going to just do a little bit here. And when I say cinch it off, I mean, maybe we'll use some extra. You can use, maybe I won't. <laughs> what you can do is you can add a crimp tube here and then bring in just if you have a scrap piece. I always save all my scraps, even if they're half of an inch, I will save my scraps because if I want to hold that in place without it moving all around, I will um, I will add the crimps and do that. But I'm not gonna do that today. So let's, let's, you know, like this and I am going to, I, I have a tendency to not I've, I've done it though before where I have, I have, um, added my lobster clasp to the end, just to the end here. And I stopped doing that. And here is why I stopped doing that because if the lobster clasp, which I've never had one of Softlex, any of their lobster clasp malfunction, but if it just so happens to malfunction, then you have to take apart the entire necklace and I don't want to do that. So 
Now what I'm going to do is I have these magical crimpers, and I don't think I talked about these. I did in the first video that I've now scratched, um, but I am going to be using magical crimpers. And the difference between the magical crimpers, which you can, I believe they still have them for sale um, at Softlex Company, is that there's just one well. The standard crimping pliers have two so that you will crimp down and form like a, a U or an arch and then, or a taco. And then what you'll do is you'll use the front notch just to round it off and to, to secure it. With this one here, what I love about the magical crimper is because they're magical. And when you give that first squeeze, just with the one well, the one squeeze, you'll pinch the four corners. Then we're gonna kind of twist it around and kind of go around the horn, I call it. And it's gonna end up having a bead-like finish. And I love that because then I don't need to use any crimp covers. I'm not a crimp cover fan. I've used them before, but if I don't have to, I'm not going to. So I'm not, I don't have my wires crossing. I have that right in the middle and I'm just gonna um, squish down. And there we have the four corners pinched. Now, with that in the middle again, I'm gonna, I turned it on its side and now I'm gonna start going around, making sure that this is in the middle. And I'm gonna continue squeezing and I squeeze until I feel no tension. And when I feel no tension, then I know that it is secure. And I feel no tension now, so now all I need to do is get this trimmed off. Get this trimmed off as close as I can down to that crimp bead or crimp tube. Looks like a bead now. Then I'm going to trim this off. And now this side I'm going to use as my clasp onto here. I'm going to get an oval jump ring for this, for this side. But this side I want as my connector. So I'm going to add my crimp tube, place that inside. And I don't want a short or a small loop. I want a nice large loop so I can easily get that in there. And I'm going to come in and give it a squeeze. And there are my four, my four corners are pinched. I'm going to turn it on its side. And now start crimping around until I feel no tension. And when I feel no tension, I know that I have that bead-like finish. And then you could just give it that tug test. I don't think I have any, oh, a little bit. Let's continue going around just, in, just to make sure. And now there's nothing there now. I'm gonna come in, give it a trim as close as I can down to that. Now I'm gonna grab um, an oval jump ring and I'll be right back. So I found an oval jump ring. However, it wasn't a shiny silver. And I'm, I like having my, my metals match. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our own jump ring and we're gonna make a Sarah Ayler jump ring using some of the wire. Oh, look how much wire I have here. I don't know where the other piece went but it was probably a little bit like that. But what I'm gonna do is I am going to take a little bit of wire here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to add it directly onto here. Actually, I won't, so I don't have to, I was just trying to save. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a Sarah Ayler jump ring. So now if something happens to this lobster clasp with which like I said nothing has ever happened to one before but just in case one does then all I have to do is just make another jump ring okay so now let's do this and get this to go through and I'm probably off camera let's have that go through there we go we're just going to make our own jump ring I'm going to Put that in the middle there, get that. And give it that crimp and there we go. And then turn it sideways, give it another squeeze and now just keep on going around. Get 
that in there. Make sure I have no tension when I squeeze and I want to make sure I don't have my clasp in the way too. There we go. All right. Give it the tug test. It's not going anywhere. Again, you don't have to do this. This was just because I couldn't find an oval jump ring. But still, now if something happens, all I have to do is just take that off. Then also too, if you wanna make a little dangle, you can make a little dangle to hang from there. But there we have our, our necklace. And this is using the design challenge kit. It is ugly sweater and from Softlex Company. So be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up if you like it, comment, I love to see what everybody has to say, and subscribe. Don't forget to go check out Ugly Sweater Design Challenge Kit. By the time you see this video, the next one will have been released and it's called All the Glitters. And until next time, have a good one.